On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we're discussing tomorrow night's game, Game 3 at Emily. We talk about all that and more. But first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Tanker. I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we are discussing tomorrow night's game, game three at Amelie. The Lightning go back home with the series tied. And real quick, before we get into tomorrow night's game, I kind of want to talk about real quick uh, a little bit more about you know, some of the expectations, I guess, maybe some of you had or, you know, the ones I definitely had about game two. And and I think that that could play a big factor, you know, what went wrong in game two. That could definitely play a factor into what we might see game three. Now, my thing going, my, 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 I didn't really have many expectations. I guess you could say. I don't I don't even know if you would have called them expectations. I I I wouldn't even say I predict it. I mean, I guess I was cautiously optimistic about game two. Obviously, as we all know, the lightning were shorthanded, no Eric Chernak, no Victor Hedman. And you have two very young defensemen, Darren Radish, uh, and Nick Pervix. And and you know, on on paper, you're losing two players and you're you're substituting really one player who's been with this team all year long and another player that has been up and down uh, on this team here and there throughout the season and also has been in the Lightning system for quite some time. So it's not like he's fresh out of college. He's not a player that, you know, f- Frozen Four just ended and he's coming straight to – the team and, and kind of playing in a different environment. No, this is a guy who's been really been splitting his time uh, more like more than often up in Syracuse as to being in Tampa Bay. Uh, these are both at the end of the day, you know, as experience, we could talk about experience all we want with these guys, but at the end of the day, they're still rookies. And I think that, you know, we need to understand that. And a lot of people understood that. And I think that, for the most part, if you know, let me know in your comments below in the comments below on our YouTube page, because I want to know, like, what were your expectations coming to this game? And mine were really with those two guys in the lineup. And then you throw Bogosian and Flurry on there as well. Mine were the fact it, it was just like I said in the last episode, if the Lightning were able to get things started early on, maybe this could have been a different game this could have been a game in which you know maybe we could have caught we could have said that they stole one because let's face it they did not steal game one uh that was a complete uh domination by the tampa bay lightning uh and 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 if the lightning were going to steal one you know and we talk about this all the time especially when a series starts you know hope for the best just split and then go back home or, uh, or or split at home and then go on the road or whatever, wherever the lightning are starting. Um, let's steal one here and there. But I, I, I think that as much of a cliche as it is to say, and I hate it, I hate using cliches, even though I use them all the time, really at the end of the day, if there was a game to steal early on in this series, it would have been game two. Um, and, you know, that just shows maybe – Maybe we'll looking back if the lightning do go down in this series. Maybe we'll look back as, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, uh, what ifs about game two. You know, what if Victor Hedman wasn't hurt? What if Eric Chernak didn't suffer uh, that hit? And and really kind of just addressed. I saw a comment, and and don't worry, we'll talk about game three. I mean, uh, game three in the next segment actually now because I really want to talk more about game two. I think there's just still. So much to unpack, especially uh, not even 24 hours later. I'm recording this around 7:30 uh, on 
on April 21st. So, you know, the game, not even 24 hours after the game. Uh, really, I, I saw a comment of, from one of our normal listeners and or, or watchers on YouTube uh, in the in the comment section. And they said that, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs came into this series with a game plan to injure the Lightning defenseman because they knew at the end of the day that Chernak and 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 Hedman were the two key pieces and you know Sergachev can't do it himself. That's not exactly the quote, but loosely quoting, very loosely quoting. And and my reaction to that is just I don't think that that was the game plan. I mean, Hedman got hurt because I he's been dealing with something all season long and it finally has come down to the fact that his body cannot go for another game, which I don't, I still don't know how to feel about it. I I just, at the end of the day, if he comes back and plays well for the rest of this series, and it seems like he just needed that extra day off, I'll say, okay, that's fine. Um, You know, especially if the lightning do win this series, I think that if if he comes back and plays well, okay, um, that's fine. I mean, he needed the day off, and now he's playing well. If he comes back and we see him kind of just do more of the same, and, and I thought for the most part uh, he, he played well in game one. I thought that uh, he had his moments where he has shown flashes because I think at the end of the day, even if he's not moving around the way we all expect him to, even if he's not scoring at the level that we're expecting him to do, I I still think that the mind is still there. I still, as much as I hate this cliche because we've been hearing it all season long, uh, especially at times when the lightning have not played well, we've heard the phrase flipping the switch. And and I feel like to a certain extent, uh, he flipped the switch in this game. And I, I I think that even though, you know, he didn't score any points, even though he only played under seven minutes in this game, I think that we saw some good things out of him. Um, you know, he had a plus minus of over of, of positive two. So that's, you know, that's that's good to see. That means that at least his presence on the ice is felt defensively. And, and that's a good sign for Lightning fans in terms of, you know, like I said on yesterday's pod, and like I said right now, a couple of minutes ago, I think he just needed a day. And if he comes back for game four, because I haven't heard anything, any changes to this lineup uh, for game three, I don't honestly, if I haven't heard anything now, um, I don't think that there's any reason to be optimistic to about the potential of seeing these two guys uh, for game three. But the good thing though, for this game is that at least the lightning will have the home crowd on their side. But as we all know, the home ice advantage really doesn't mean much in the playoffs. So we'll see how that pans out. But yeah, Hedman, you know, hopefully it's not something that keeps him out for the rest of the series, but I'm actually more concerned though about Eric Chernak. He he has really, like I said on the last episode and, and numerous times throughout the course of the season, he has really filled in to that role uh, that Ryan McDonough had as really the stopper on this team. Um, you know, it is what it is with him. He gets injured quite a bit. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, this wasn't a play. The circumstances of him getting hurt and missing the game wasn't because of him making a great play or putting his body on the line. It was because of a dirty play. Um, So to answer the question or, or just to kind of reply to the statement that was made by one of our listeners saying that the, the Leafs were intentionally going out there and with the, with the goal of hurting lightning players. I don't think that's, I don't think it's accurate. Um, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, it was it was as dirty of a hit as you could come as you could get to. Um, I think that the suspension was fine. Um, it ruled out it, it. 
it, it really reflected the intention of the hit. Um, at the same time, you know, you miss a player for possibly longer uh, than than just a couple of games or a game. Because like I said, my biggest worry about the hit with Chernak is that it could very well, being in the area that it was, it could be a concussion. We haven't heard anything different. Um, I didn't hear anything today. Maybe we'll hear something tomorrow before the game. I would be very shocked if we see him play. But at the same time, this guy wants to play, and he's feeling up to it, and he gets cleared, he'll play. And I feel the same way about Victor Hedman. I think that they realize, you know, obviously, as long as they're cleared to go, I think both these guys will play. I don't think it's going to be a situation where they're going to hold themselves out. Um, I would imagine maybe we'll see Chernak and Hedman at least skate maybe tomorrow. Uh, before the game as to whether or not they'll participate in warmups is a whole nother story. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll talk about game three in just a little bit. But first, I want to talk about our sponsor today, and that is our friends over at eBay Motors. Now, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You could be sure every part uh, checks the green light the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green, the name of the game, uh, the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from you'll back you'll be back in the game in no time after all it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed so get the right parts the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride eligible items only exclusions apply so talking about game three now it, it it's it's difficult to kind of just be i don't know i'm not being negative and i'm but i'm also not optimistic about this because i was thinking about this all day and i i was trying to figure out how to word it or or trying to discuss it on this episode about how a lightning how how we should feel about a lightning team that doesn't have Eric Chernak with it that doesn't have Victor Hedman in the lineup and when you look at this lineup and, and the, the defensive pairings are projected as such it should be Sergachev Radish Cole and Perbix and Flurry and Bogosian sorry I, my eyes my allergies are killing me everybody uh <laughs> When I look at these defensive pairings, I like Sergachev and Radish, but in my opinion, Colin Pervix, Flurry and Bogosian. Flurry, as we all know, hasn't really played a whole ton this year. Bogosian has been in and out of the lineup as well. And to be honest, it's going to take a, an incredible effort by this entire team to win game three. Um, we saw the holes. We saw the mistakes in game two. We we know what the outcome is. We saw the result. Andre Vasilevsky kept this team in the game, and that's hard to believe when your goaltender gives up seven goals, but that's the fact. Um the team did not play well in front of him. It showed it in the box score. And unless we see some sort of Willis Reed like comeback for Hedman and Chernak, especially Chernak, um, it's going to be a very uphill climb for this Lightning team. Uh, the one thing that is on their side over the next couple of games, they are back home, which they are one of the best teams in the league at playing at home. So that is in their back pocket. Having said that, like I said at the start of the show, home ice advantage doesn't mean jack squat in the, in the in the playoffs. 
as we have seen from the Lightning over the last three years, the good teams, the teams that have a shot at a championship, are the teams that go into a hostile environment and win. Now, having said that, the Lightning won. They got the, the hard part done. They won game one up in Toronto. Scotiabank, one of the more intimidating places to play. Now, this really, in theory, should be the easy part in a certain way. Winning at home. But they're behind the eight ball, like I said, missing two very valuable players. It's going to take a very mammoth effort from this team. This is where we're going to see our playoff heroes come into play. Can, will we see another goal to get the lightning on the board or or uh, a big-time goal from Ian Cole? Who knows? I mean, he has a ton of playoff experience. Won two cups with, with the Pittsburgh Penguins, so he knows how to go out there and face adversity in the playoffs. So do a lot of these teams, uh, a lot of these players, excuse me. I really think that Point, Kucherov, and Stamkos are really going to have to kick it into high gear. Um, because as we all know, this team, you don't want to go into game four at home with the possibility of losing that game as well and going back up Toronto and the series ending there. And I think that John Cooper's post-game presser from last night I think showed us that the gloves are off for Coop. I think we're going to see some changes around in the lineups. I think that we're going to see Perry get some more time with Paul and Colton. Um, we're going to see a lot of aggressive forechecking early on. Um, I think that John Cooper is at the point, especially, you know, that conference, people are asking him about this and that and depth and all this and that. And he defended, you know, point Sorelli and Paul, uh, one of the, one of the best three center combinations in the league. And I completely agree with him. I think we're going to see a whole nother level of, of, of off, offensive play in this one. I don't think it's going to be a blowout like we saw from game one. I think it's going to be a tight game, but it's going to be a game in which the Lightning answer back in numerous ways, physically, offensively, defensively. I think they're going to play a lot better. I mean, really, they don't have a choice at this point. They have to go and play well in front of Vasilevsky. I'm not worried about Vasilevsky. Yeah, he gave up a couple of soft goals. Well, I wouldn't say soft. I take that back. Maybe a couple of goals where really, in theory, he should be saving those. He should be stopping those. So I expect him to play a lot better, especially uh, at home now. Um, and 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 really, we got to see an all-around team effort. We got to see sort of the same effort that we saw from game one, the same effort that we see uh, from this team throughout numerous times this season in which they have played like the team that we all expect them to. I think that, though, even though the Lightning lost uh, game two and in spectacular fashion, I think that we saw a lot of positives. We saw uh, Corey Perry score. We saw Tanner Janot, uh fight in that game. I thought he was doing a lot of good things. Anthony Sorelli, I thought, was very solid down the middle. Um, I expect, like I said, this to be a very, very concentrated offensive performance an effort in the early minutes of this game. I think that John Cooper is not going to leave anything to chance in this game. I 100% think, and I'm sure everybody who's listening to this podcast firmly agrees with me when I say that game three is a must win. And I would even venture to say that win or lose, even more so win, that game four will be a must win for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So very early on in the series, you know, usually we're talking about games four, five, whatever, maybe potential elimination games. Those are all must win. But here we are tied going into game two, uh, game three and four, where I firmly believe that these next couple of games, not only if the Lightning win or lose them, but the way they play will very much, def def uh, very much determine 
uh, how the rest of this series goes. So wrapping things up on the show. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think below. I just, this is this is a very critical game. Um, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that I am overreacting. And let me know on our C social media pages, on our YouTube page as well. Uh, you could follow us on uh, our YouTube page. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore lightning. Follow us on Instagram at locked on underscore lightning. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed distributed in audio. And guess what? They are 100% free. And always remember, uh, we will be coming to you every single day for the duration of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, so make sure to tune in. Uh, hopefully the, the lightning could show very early on in the series because I kind of felt last year that it took a little bit of while for them to get going to show that form, uh, that that championship or that at least, you know, level of, of, of play that could get them into the final. Um, I think that they are still capable of that. I still think, you know, even though maybe they're not the big bad bolts that we normally see on a yearly basis, I still think that this is a team that is very much built to win. They're a little bit behind the eight ball. They're a little bit of a different, uh, different situation right now with Chernak and Hedman. Um, this is going to be the biggest test that we have seen from the Lightning uh, face in the playoffs in the last couple of years. Probably the biggest test that we have seen them face since they faced off against the Columbus Blue Jackets in the first round in the bubble. I think that really when you look at this, uh, different situation for the Lightning just because we haven't really had to deal or they haven't really had to deal with a whole ton of injuries in the playoffs. Uh, Steven Stamkos, uh, a couple of years in the bubble, yeah, that was one thing. You know, uh, you still had your your de defense. That's the different thing about the playoffs. You lose a score, uh, you still fall on your defense to really win games for you, um, where now it's opposite. Now the Lightning need to fall on their offense. They need to be aggressive as well. They really need to, to tighten the grip around the Toronto Maple Leafs early on in order to win this hockey game, this must-win hockey game. So let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, I want to I want to know in the comments below, really, what how are you feeling about this? I I still think that these are winnable games. Um, even though the Toronto Maple Leafs, as we all know, very good hockey team, uh, a team that has a lot of weapons. I'm still, you know, regardless of what I've seen in the first two games and, and what I've seen this whole entire se uh, season from the Maple Leafs, I'm still in that mode where I, I look at this Maple Leafs team, I look at this Maple Leafs roster, and, and I say to myself, and, and maybe I'm, I'm being cocky, or maybe I'm in my right frame of mind, I think the latter, I think this team still has a ton of proof, and I know they do. And I know the good thing even though the lightning are down, they're playing the, the positive about this is that, you know, this isn't like they're playing the Boston Bruins. They're not playing one of the top teams in the NHL where they're, they, they have a ton of experience in the playoffs. This team has yet to show that they could get it done in the playoffs. And here's another opportunity for them to get it done. And I still don't think that they could do it. I still don't think they could do it because they went into game six last year they, all they had to do was close things out, and the Lightning came back one, two straight and went on to the Stanley Cup final, and they had a complete meltdown. I think this – I mean, you looked if, – if, if game one is any indication of the fragility in terms of the mental mind state that is the Toronto Maple Leafs, I think even though they won last night's game, you could kind of tell they were still a team who was afraid to play the game with, with any sign – of comfortableness. I, I still think even with the big lead that they had last night, I'm sure to a certain degree going into the third, even though us lightning fans knew that the game was pretty much over by then. I still firmly believe that the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, were afraid that we were going to see some monumental comeback. And I think that they're going to think about that until the series is over. So the Lightning need to capitalize on that. It's not only a battle on the ice, but it's a battle in in, in the heads, in the egos, uh, the confidence level. And that's all why the Lightning needs to jump out to these important starts and get things going and, and clear the way for Andre Vasilevsky to carry this team, give him a chance. So 
I'm expecting big games down the middle from Sorelli, Paul, and Point. I'm expecting big games from Corey Perry and Alex Kalorn. And I'm expecting a huge game from Andre Vasilevsky in that. So we'll, I'll probably drop an episode tomorrow, um, maybe post game. Who knows? I mean, I mean, I'll probably do something tomorrow. But tweet to me at Danky Dank, D E N K Y D eight N K. Tweet to me your questions, comment. Tweet to me during the the the, the game. I'll tweet back. Love tweeting uh, and talking and conversing with all of you on social media. So we'll be back whenever. If anything, we'll be back Monday to discuss the game and look towards uh game four as well so in the meantime that's been it for this episode of locked on lightning part of the lockdown podcast network i'm your host adam danker